welcome to our today's session. I'm Prachi, Head Nutritionist and Lifestyle Expert and Head of Cancer Vertical with Team Blue. The month of September is regarded as Childhood Cancer Awareness Month. Considering this, we thought of creating more awareness as to how can we help work on the likely risk factors and proactively safeguard our children's future against the threat of cancer through preventive measures so that uh, you know we reduce the risk of developing cancer in their adulthood as well. Now, when it comes to childhood cancers, you know, there is not much clarity as to why do they get them at such a young age. But we can draw a few risk factors that may contribute towards it. Also, it is important to look at it from a preventive uh, you know, point of view to create better future for our children and avoid or reduce the chances of getting cancer in their adulthood as these are their building years. Now, let us first understand what is cancer. If I can put it in simple terms, there is a cancer gene in us, which if turned on leads to cancer. So the aim is always to you know, keep it off. Now, when our immunity is weakened due to some factors, it can turn on the cancer gene and our body cells then start dividing you know, abnormally and rapidly. Of course, cancer is multifactorial, you know, meaning there could be more than one reason uh, you know, for the cancer to happen and some percentage is purely genetic as well. But most of the times, the root cause lies in our own lifestyle as well. Right from, you know, issues in nutrition to activity levels to sleep issues, emotional well-being, all of these play a huge role in putting that cancer gene on. Uh, you know, so therefore, lifestyle plays a huge role in this and it is very important to teach our children these basics from their early years. That's very, very important so that, you know, we create a generation, uh, you know, wherein the, the probability of cancer is, is lesser than what it is in today's scenario. Now, talking about the first pillar, which is nutrition, you know, it is very, very important to teach our children from the beginning, you know, from their early years itself to have balanced meals, have a balanced plate, uh, you know, in terms of having a good portion of whole uh, grains, uh, whole, whole dals and pulses, uh, having a good amount or rather a rainbow plate of vegetables uh, in their diet, uh, you know, right from carrots, beetroot, uh, green leafy vegetables, pumpkin, sweet potatoes, all, you know, the more colors you have on the plate, the better. Because these contain those antioxidants, um, you know, anti-inflammatory compounds in them, which help build the immunity further and of course uh, you know uh, to, also we need to see to it that they have uh, you know good fresh fruits they have their portion of nuts and seeds in the day uh, which help in you know giving the body the, the, the necessary nutrients to build their immunity to build uh, you know, to help them with better growth and development as well. Also, uh, you know, in terms of, uh, you know, going organic as much as possible, considering that there are, in today's world, you know, in terms of the pollution, in terms of the pesticides which are used, which are also one of the, you know, contributors, the chemicals used in them are also one of the contributors in uh, causing a DNA mutation and therefore, you know, can increase the chances of cancer as much as possible to use organic, uh, you know, food stuff, uh, you know, which are not chemically laden, basically, is what is, is very essential uh, to be aware of. Um, coming to the other aspect, which is, uh, you know, quite often parents tend to think of, you know, uh, what about dairy, you know, how, how my child would need to have good amount of milk, milk products and stuff. So, it's very important to understand that, uh, you know, in today's world, the dairy dairy industry is very very different different than it probably was when we were young okay some you know few decades before uh so you know right now uh a lot of these cattle are given antibiotic and hormonal injections to increase their yield and if these uh you know if such kind of dairy is consumed by us or by our children that can 
you know, further affect our hormonal system, our immunity, and that can uh, also, you know, therefore weaken our immunity and therefore can uh, put that cancer gene on. So it is very important to, you know, source your, source the milk uh, from like ethically sourced uh, is very important to, to have organic, ethically sourced, uh, you know, A2 cow's milk and milk products is something that, uh, you know, would be better. Uh, similarly, in terms of non-veg, you know, if, if you're, you are meat eaters, if, if you have chicken, fish uh, and stuff, of course, red meat is something that, you know, need, you need to restrict or probably avoid as well. But, uh, you know, lean meat, so be chicken or even fish for that matter, it's always good to have organic stuff. And also, it is very important to, uh, you know, again, from the same point of view that even these uh, you know, the chickens uh, are are uh, given these hormonal injections or uh, antibiotic injections to increase the yield. So that is also something that we need to be aware of. And also in terms of fish, there's a lot of fish farming that goes on these days, you know. So a lot of chemicals, a lot of hormones are used uh, to grow these fishes. So it's very important to know the source where you are, you know, getting your chicken, your fish, your eggs as well. They should be free range eggs. So that's also something that, you know, the quality of food that we give to our children is very, very important for us to be aware of, you know, because um, as I said, you know, in terms of the chemicals, in terms of these hormonal injections, which are pumped in these foodstuffs, that's really, uh, you know, that can create an havoc in their hormonal system and in terms of their immunity as well. So we need to be really aware of that. Um, the other is sugar. You know, I think by now all of us do uh, have uh, an understanding of, you know, that sugar, refined white sugar is like white poison. It's a slow poison and it's it's always, it's good to, you know, avoid refined white sugar in their routine as much as possible. You know, of course, they can enjoy having cakes and maybe, you know, a little bit of, uh, you know, uh, sweets. Uh, but of course, it's always good to make it uh, you know, from, from natural sweeteners like be jaggery, honey, dates, of course, in moderation again. Okay. But refined white sugar is something that we really need to, you know, be aware of that we need to really restrict or avoid them from having as much as possible because it, it crashes your immunity in, in no time. Okay. So, and considering that, you know, Children are sometimes very, uh, you know, they really want sweet stuff uh, almost day in and day out. So we really have to make sure that, you know, firstly, uh, there's a discipline which is required, uh, you know, for them to have it also in terms of having such uh, sugary foods, be it from, you know, natural sweeteners, made out of natural sweeteners as well. Uh, because I said, you know, too much of sugar, be it from any source, can also act as, you know, sugar in the body. Like, uh, uh, like refined white sugar so there has to be a moderation it has to be you know uh consumed in moderation basically um also the other fact is that you know uh these packaged foods processed foods they are loaded with sugar salt and that has a mechanism that you know that in fact leads to addiction that you know children are then addicted to such packaged foods as well uh because that kind of you know plays with our brain uh, you know, too much of sugar and salt and that causes an addiction in them and that's why they tend to, uh, you know, crave for more and more of these packaged foods. So it is very important for us, you know, pair, as, as a parent to uh, see to it that, you know, they to, to be watchful of this and, uh, you know, give them le as less an exposure to such stuff as much as possible. Of course, uh, you know, once in a while is, is fine, but then, uh, you know, we have to be aware of the fact that these processed foods, packaged foods is something that, uh, you know, we really have to uh, keep a tab on because these are loaded with preservatives and additives and, uh, you know, sugar, refined flour, flour uh, with no zero calories, empty calories, basically. So it has no nutrition value to it. Uh, you know, even the health drinks which are marketed, you know, these these chocolate drinks, which are supposedly good for their growth and development. Actually, if you really go, go to read the labels, the food label, they are actually uh, have nothing 
of nutritive value they are loaded with sugar they are they are loaded with preservatives and additives so that's something that you really have to you know try and avoid rather give them you know home cooked balanced meals as much as possible also it is important you know to uh, teach our children from their uh, you know at an early from an early age to read food label um, you know always whenever you go to a, to a supermarket or to a store whenever you pick up these packaged foods always get into the habit of reading the food labels which are behind at the uh, you know uh, at the back of the package and the the first ingredient which is mentioned is the most in that product and uh, then you know it's in the descending order basically so if you look if you you find uh, you know words like sugar of course these days uh, you know even the marketing gimmicks are such that they wouldn't really directly mention it as sugar it would be the high fructose corn syrup or uh, you know fructose syrup or uh, you know sucrose so these are the words that you know the keywords that are usually used uh, for sugar so you know if that's the first uh, word uh, mentioned in the ingredient list then you know that you know it is full of sugar um similarly in terms of uh, refined white flour refined wheat flour so usually instead of writing it as maida mention it, it as maida they may mention it as you know a uh, refined wheat flour which is again maida so you know you have to be uh, you know you tend you you need to educate yourself as well about these keywords uh, you know these gimmicks which are you these days used but reading the food labels and getting our children also in, into the habit of reading these food labels will definitely go a long way uh, even for them to be more aware of you know how to make healthier choices and be to be aware of uh, you know of these these food products and and what they can contain as well okay uh in fact these days uh, a lot of schools are also becoming more aware and you know they have a no junk policy in school not to get any junk food in school so these measures are also very much required uh, in today's time uh, for a better future of these kids as well uh having said that you know if they do feel like having you know uh uh maybe say cakes or 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 chips or you know the the traditional junk food basically it's always you know these days there are a lot of healthier versions of it in the market uh, or even you can make it at home in fact or you know you can log on to our website uh, www.lukurino.com and check out the recipe corner wherein there are a lot of recipes um you know of such uh healthy snacks that you know you can offer to your kids um and in fact you also get a lot of uh, you know these ready uh products as well these days which are hel- which have which are a healthier version of these so you all can definitely um you know check that out uh the other aspect to look at you know at a young age is their gut health uh you know especially when kids have constipation uh you know it's always uh usually you know it it is uh, you know consider that sometimes you know parents think that, that it's it's okay to be constipated for many many days but if it becomes chronic it's always uh good to uh you know get it uh, uh checked and uh you know work towards it because constipation basically means that you know the child is putting in uh, the toxins inside is is uh, storing the toxins inside right and that's something we need to avoid because it the mechanism should be that the toxins are thrown out of the body uh should be thrown out of the body uh, you know ev- on a de- regular basis and if that's not happening the toxins are kind of you know getting uh loaded into the body which can also affect weaken the immunity cause more inflammation in the body so that's something that we need to really be uh you know at really be aware of if the child has constipation a chronic one then we need to really address that as well also the intake of uh, you know probiotics uh, coming from either rice kanji or even good quality like organic a2 curd buttermilk is something that you know can be a part of their uh, routine because that's also something that will help build their uh, good like gut microbiome good gut bacteria 
uh, which not only helps with digestion, but they are also known to uh, help with immunity, to build immunity. Um, also, water intake is something, you know, as simple as water because ultimately water is the medium through which the toxins are thrown out of the body. Also, for better blood circulation, which when, you know, if blood circulation happens well, is when your immunity also becomes better. So, water intake is also something that we need to, you know, look at uh, uh, in, in our child's diet, in a child's routine. Uh, you know, so that is also something that we need to be aware of. Coming to activity, uh, you know, considering that, you know, these days uh, kids are too much, uh, you know, they are, uh, they, they spend more time indoors, uh, you know, watching TV or being on the mobile, being on the computer, laptops. So we really have to, you know, make an effort, effort to see to it that uh, they have an outdoor play as well, maybe an hour's outdoor play at least, you know, because that is very, very important from their development perspective, from their immunity perspective as well. Uh, because that is how, uh, you know, the, the, the growth, uh, blood circulation is something that will happen smoothly. And also in terms of their immunity, that is very, very important. Um, also, you know, sometimes uh, it, it's very important for them to play in the, uh, you know, in the sand, in the mud. Uh, of course, if you are not sure of the, you know, if it's too dirty, if you think it's too dirty, you can also get organic uh, mud or clay, uh, you know, at home and they can play with that for a while because that will help build their gut microbiome, which further helps to build their immunity. So that is very, very important. These days, of course, when it was COVID time, you know, using sanitizers or something that was understandable, but, uh, you know, we do look at, you know, certain parents who or, you know, otherwise uh, people as well that, you know, they tend to use a lot of sanitizers every now and then, you know, to, to clean their hands. But that is actually, uh, you know, can further reduce your immunity because you do require certain, uh, you know, uh, helpful microbiome, uh, you know, over your skin as well, which in fact helps to further build your immunity. So that is also something that, you know, we need to be aware of. So outdoor activity uh, is very important for them to build their immunity further. Uh, coming to sleep. So, of course, sleep is something, you know, children are, uh, again, they, they might be hooked to their television, you know, their, their cartoons, their programs and stuff, uh, watching TV throughout the day, at night as well, not really following a sleep routine per se. So that is something that can also in the long run affect their immunity because healing, rejuvenation, hormonal balance, all of that takes place when we sleep, uh, you know, at night and when we have a deep sleep cycle. So it's also very important to, you know, create a sleep hygiene, sleep routine for them at an early age, uh, you know, so that that can help in their better growth and development in, in, in better uh, immunity as well, right? Uh, so that is something that, you know, we need to, you know, look at at an early age to help them sleep better, have a sleep routine. Of course, maybe over the weekend for a day or two is something that they can, you know, uh, not really follow the rules per se. But otherwise, it's it, it's important, uh, you know, on an average for those five, six days a week at least to, to be on track to, to have a sleep hygiene routine for sure. Coming to the emotional health, uh, you know, uh, because of the fast-paced life probably uh, and many other factors, uh, you know, sometimes children tend to feel a disconnect with their elders, with their parents and, you know, they may not be able to express their emotions at the right time. So it's also important to, because we've seen a lot of such cases, you know, when it comes to cancer as well, that many of the these cancers, uh, you know, the root cause of it has been suppressed emotions you know so we really need to you know from an early age try to uh, teach our children to uh, express their emotions and not really suppress them so having a dialogue having open conversations with kids to teach them you know how they can express their emotions freely with you you know as a parent it's very very important because as i said you know suppressed emotions has been one of the major contributors towards uh, you know, towards cancer being one of the major risk factors towards cancer in the 
long run. So that is something that you know we can do it at at an early age. Uh, you know, wherein we can if we can teach them how how they can express their emotion is something that would you know really help them in the long run. So apart from these pillars, you know, in terms of nutrition, in terms of their activity, of uh, sleep and emotional health. Uh, the other aspect that may also, you know, be a risk factor is, uh, you know, the mother's health during pregnancy. Okay, so uh, it's always good to, you know, avoid radiation exposure as much as possible. Also, alcohol, you know, direct consumption of alcohol while, you know, one is pregnant is something that can really affect the DNA, uh, you know, of the, of the fetus. Uh, you know, it may cause DNA, you know, gene mutation in them, which may, uh, you know, can lead to cancer in their, you know, growing years or in adulthood as well. Um, also, smoking, not just active smoking, but even passive smoking for that matter. So, for example, you know, the, the female or uh, the mother is not really smoking, but if the father or anyone in the house is a smoker, so the mother also inhales those, um, you know, those harmful compounds uh, on a regular basis and that can also affect the fetus. Okay, so uh, it can also be one of the, you know, risk factors for DNA mutations, uh, you know, which can cause other diseases as well in the, uh, you know, in the <clears throat> child in the uh, long run. But it may, you know, uh, amongst those diseases, it could be cancer as well. So it's very important to be aware of, you know, these these uh, possible risk factors so that we can reduce the chances of, you know, uh, getting cancer in this future generation. So uh, these were some of the, you know, possible risk factors. Uh, and that's something if we can train, we can uh, educate our children, our next generation on this, it can very well help in, you know, reducing the chances uh, of, you know, of them uh, getting cancer in the long run you know, or even in their adulthood. So, you know, if in case if you have any queries related to this topic or to know more about our cancer care programs, do visit our website www.lukutino.com. Thank you everyone and take care.